сегодня. And we're, spe we're specifically going to talk about moving as a team when we're being shot at. I had a very interesting career for my three decades with the uh, police. I was part of a very interesting team where we did bodyguarding of international protected people and uh, that included protecting presidents of the United States, it, all the prime ministers of Canada. I've also protected the Queen of England and uh, at that time the Prince, now the King of England, and many other very interesting people. When I applied for the International Legion, they would not let you come without uh, combat experience. And I do not have combat experience with the military, but I explained to them what I had done for my 30 years with the police. And I think that uh, is much more than a small tour in Afghanistan because I was in uh, real conditions of tactic where policemen get shot and killed or stabbed or beaten, and that is every day of my work. I believe that my experience with the police counts for 30 years at least as much as someone who does three or four months in Afghanistan. I left the military because Canada was at peace, and I wanted to be in uh, tactical combat. Mm -hmm. And so I joined the police and that is where I found that every day you went out into danger, not just when there was a war. And this is the reason why I came here, because here there is somebody who is being evil and they're bigger than another person. And that is the same reason why as a policeman I wanted to help people who couldn't do it themselves. And Ukraine is doing a very good job, but they need help and they need help from the world. And so this is why I came here, so that I can help the same I did when I was a policeman, to help uh, the people who want to help themselves, but they need more uh, resources, money, experience, training, to beat the giant. I can't say they don't like it. They don't like me being in danger, but they are very proud and they are supportive. They are not saying, come home, come home, even though they want me home but they understand this is where I belong. I have always been a warrior ever since I was young. Um, I'm the first person in my family, um, my large family, to ever join the military or do the police. So I'm not like them. I always wanted to help people when someone is a bully. When someone's a bully, I don't like it and I will go help. And so it doesn't matter if it's international, Ukraine, uh, Russia, or whether it's just somebody beating up uh, an old person on the street for their money. I will stop all of it as best I can. So they support me very much and they're very proud and they walk around and make bracelets. My daughter has made many bracelets and I've given them out to many soldiers and she just sent me another bag full of them. And uh, they've also sent me winter clothing and uh, I brought 900 kilograms of uh, helmets and body armor and boots with me when I came here six months ago. And I gave it to the Ukrainian military. Um, and it, most of that was all donated from where I used to work, the police. Even in Canada, uh, I was always a very good shooter, always. And so my supervisor said, okay, now go teach. And this is when I learned that being good at something has nothing to do with being able to teach that. So you can have the best shooting, best soldier in the world, but they can't teach. So it's two different sciences. You must have the science and the knowledge of how to do what you want to, and then you must have the knowledge of how to teach it to people. And this is even a bigger skill. So I am trying to, because of my long experience, trying to teach them how to teach certain tactics, but also how to have the students learn it and remember it and practice it properly. We talked about training scars. It's a training scar. We would never want three meters between you. But you understand, if we did 10 meters, I wouldn't see you. One of the other characteristics of a instructor is that they need to understand that you may learn one way 
and you may learn another and I may learn another. You can't use the same words for different people. Sometimes I speak to you differently than I speak to you and I'll talk to them. I ask lots of I ask for lots of questions because many people have a question but they don't want to ask in Canada or here. And so I encourage people to ask me questions because then they learn the way they need to for the question that they have. In uh, English, they have ethos, pathos, and legos. This is the triangle of learning. The student must first believe that I am an expert, that I have the knowledge. Two, the student must believe that they need to know it. Someone may be an expert in fishing, but I don't want to learn how to do fishing. So it doesn't matter. Obviously, these soldiers, they want to learn because this is their life. This is their country. So I believe that I am very qualified to be teaching. The students have to understand that and believe it. Once they do, they have to believe that what I'm teaching is good for them to learn. And I think that they, they see that. The third is that you have passion. And the instructors need to have the knowledge, but they also need to have the passion. They need to, to understand that what they're doing is important. And most important, they have to show that to the students. They have to be excited and tell them, listen, this is really interesting. This can really save your life. This can make Ukraine free. Listen to this important rule. Practice this important rule. What I would like to say to uh, the world is that uh, humanitarian aid is fantastic. Please send it. But understand that we need military aid because otherwise the orcs will be eating and wearing the clothes that you send and eating the food you send. I have people that tell me they only want to send humanitarian aid and that makes me angry because this country is only free right now because of bullets and blood. And to protect the soldiers they need helmets and body armor and bullets and guns and tanks and planes. This is what allows the clothing and the food that you send to be eaten by you free Ukrainians and not an invading army. To the Ukrainians, um, I say that I would not be here if I did not see how they fight. Um, if you didn't want to be free, I would be at home uh, doing the things that I like to do at home and I'd be with my family. I only came here because the way the Ukrainians fight and we have people wearing t-shirts, including my children at home, that say, fight like a Ukrainian. This is a common saying now in the West, that fight like a Ukrainian, because that means you are the smaller, supposedly weaker, and yet you don't act that way. You fight like a lion. And that's how the Ukrainian soldiers, these are normal, as you know, I'm teaching TRO. These are normal people one year ago. They're not professional soldiers. And yet I don't see fear, I see determination. I see that they don't say to themselves, uh, what, why am I here, should I be here? They understand from what I see and what they tell me, this is where they must be. Because if they're not here, then they'll be waiting for the orcs to knock on their door. So they are here and they're confident to be here. And I'm very proud of these normal people who are now warriors. Because I've always been a warrior, but many people don't have that in their nature. But these guys all are now warriors, and I'm very proud to be part of it and helping. All of us come here to work as one big team. Everybody together will be who wins this war.